This recording is part of recordings that cover epithelial tissues and a specific type of epithelial tissue is glandular epithelium. So glandular epithelium um, usually is simple cuboidal or simple columnar type of epithelium um, and their function is to secrete substances um, into uh, tissue fluids or to the outside surface. So we can actually divide glands into two major types. You can have an exocrine gland, which you see here on the left. So exo means out of, and endocrine, which you see on the right, which means within or inside. The exocrine glands secrete a product into a duct, which you see like right here, and then it, which that duct opens into either the external surface, like your skin, or an internal space, like say in your stomach or the small intestine, the lumen of your small intestine. We'll encounter more exocrine glands in AMP1, endocrine glands you cover in AMP2. Now endocrine glands secrete hormones into your bloodstream. I want you to think of like exocrine glands as like taking um, a turning a faucet open and you got that hose that spurts out the water. And I want you to think of maybe endocrine glands as being more like a sponge that's been saturated where the water moves more like oozes out. Um, so what we're gonna do is I wanna talk about some types of secretions and specifically I'm actually gonna be looking at exocrine gland secretions. But I do wanna mention that the um, exocrine glands can be classified by the type of secretion, which is what we're going to discuss about discuss today, but also the structure of the glands. Um, I want to, um, but before I do that, I do want to show you some examples of glandular epithelium. Is this one over here? This is the pancreas, and the pancreas is actually both an endocrine and an exocrine gland. This here, this group of cells are called the islets of Langerhans. They produce insulin and glucagon, which are hormones, which regulate blood glucose levels. Out here, all these cells here is the exocrine portion of the pancreas that produces various uh, enzymes involved in digestion. They'll be secreted into your small intestine. Over here, this out here is the thyroid gland. Right here, is the parathyroid gland. So both the parathyroid gland and thyroid glands are endocrine glands. Thyroid gland produces something like T3 and T4 and parathyroid gland produces parathyroid hormone. On bottom left, you have a gland from, it's actually a salivary gland, which is an example of an exocrine gland. It helps with um, digestion. So um, when you chew your food and mix this with saliva, moistens up that food and helps to start the addition of starches. And then over here on the far right, you're seeing an example of a um, sweat gland right here, which is an exocrine gland. Okay, so these just kind of give you an idea kind of what they look like. Now, so I had mentioned previously, we can classify exocrine glands by the structure. The only unicellular, that means one cell, the only unicellular gland that we have is the goblet cell. And actually you will see goblet cells in lab and you'll see here, there's a goblet cell here and there's one there. They secrete something called mucus. The other glands are multicellular and they classify them on kind of the, the relationship between the ducts and the glandular area and like the structure of the duct, the shape of the secretory portion. I'm not gonna test you on that, don't really care, but there are different ways that they can classify them. But what's more important is you know the classification of exocrine glands by the mode of secretion. So there are three types of secretions. So the first one is called merocrine. With this type of glandular secretion, the secretory product is released from the cell, the cell remains intact. 
So this is the, the, the least damaging to the cell. No loss of the glandular cell at all. So your salivary glands. And here, this is actually the parotid salivary gland that it's showing you. Those are an example of something that has that mode of secretion. Another one would be something that we'll be talking about this semester are eccrine sweat glands or also exhibit this mode of secretion, which helps you cool yourself off. The second type is if we have an apocrine mode of secretion. APO, APO means like a part of, portion. And I want you to think of it when you look at the picture, with this type of secretion, the apical portion, that top portion of the glandular cell comes off with the secretion. And so this one, you do lose parts of the cells, and it's just a portion of the cell, and it's the apical portion of the cell. But it's not a problem because these are epithelial cells. They'll repair, they'll regrow. Good example of something that has this mode of secretion, as you see here, is the mammary gland that secretes breast milk. And the last example is holocrine. Think hollow, whole, entire. With this mode of secretion, the glandular components, the secretion that we need to get rid of for a reason, the entire cell comes off with it. Again, not, not a problem because you notice we have these stem cells at the bottom. So they're always going to divide and we're going to replace those cells. So the entire cells are released with the secretion. And the example they're showing you here is a sebaceous gland which is associated with hair follicles. The secretion is called sebum, which helps to um, lubricate hair, uh, moisten it, um, makes your hair more pliable. Um, so that's an example of something that exhibits a holocrine mode of secretion. So those are the modes of glandular secretion. So glandular epithelium is a type of epithelial tissue.